Hello everyone and welcome back to our optimization tips and tricks series. In this episode we're going to take a look at the collisions of a mesh and how we can improve the performance and optimization of these collisions. Now you'll find that a lot of meshes may be just using the complex collision. We're going to talk a bit about that, why that they have been set to that and how we can improve that down the line. And also certain things to consider when you are deciding what to optimize. So let's jump in. So the next thing we're going to look at when it comes to optimization is the collision data. So when you've got a like mesh or sketch mesh for that matter, you're going to have collision data associated to it. And the collision data is what the engine is using to work out whether or not physics uh, actions can actually impact it. So the player bumping into it, things getting hit by it, whatever it may be. So here we have this house asset. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up this like mesh for this. And I can preview what the collision mesh for this actually looks like by just going to show and then going down to simple collision. And I can turn it on and I'll see something like this. Now, this will vary based upon what mesh you're looking at. But in this case, what they've done is they've told it to use this complex collision, which is the sort of light blue one you see here, as the simple collision. And the reason why they've done that is because they want you to be able to enter the house. Okay, so collision objects have the uh, downsides that they can't be concave. So you can't do like holes and everything like that. So you see how we've got this green box going on it. As a solid shape, we can't go into this doorway if we use that shape there. So what they've done is they've gone down here into the collision and told it to use complex collision as simple, which, okay, gets the job done, but there is a slight downside to that and the downside to that is if we are doing physical reactions to this thing so if you're looking at physics or uh nanite uh not nanite, sorry uh, nyqua stuff uh you, you are basically adding a lot more calculations to the engine that you need to okay so it's pretty wasteful to do that sort of collision on an object now there are ways around this one is we can't well we can't use a simple collision and we want to still be able to walk through the hole so i'm going to change it back to use the product default which is the going to be the simple collision so you'll see here the white bit goes away okay and you'll see here that this green box is no good because i want to go through the hole so what we do here is we basically make our own up and i can actually delete this if i wanted to like that and add my own collision in here so i'm going to add box simplified collision and I'm just going to scale that. I'm going to just turn my snaps off. Scale that down to get the rough size of the water. And I'm going to position it into a place where the collision is, makes sense with the wall that we're going up against. Now, what you do in terms of the collision is totally dependent on what kind of game you're making. Like, for example, can I get on the roof of this thing? That's going to change how I build this collision here. I may want to keep it as complex. Everything's going to be an it depends scenario based upon what kind of game you're making. But as you can see, I can add this freely wherever I want. And I can add another one too. If I hold down Alt and move out again, I can make a duplicate like so. And I can scale this one down and move it to cover up that half of the doorway. And then do it again over here. And then I can also rotate it. Duplicate first, then rotate it. 90 degrees. Okay, and you build a rough estimate of the shape. So this only works if you have no desire of needing it to be super accurate, um, but you still want to use the hole and just bump into the wall quite freely so it depends on kind of the shape that you're trying to do but this will make this a lot lot better for physics calculations a lot less issues uh for bumping into things and a lot more predictable as well so if you're doing things on a multiplayer game where physics objects are involved you want to limit as much variable interaction the physics objects have with the world so take out as many things that they could bounce off of uh, or collide with that way it's a bit more predictable for the multiplier engine to register and replicate the position of something uh, through physics. But yeah, that's what we do. We go through, we just tidy up our collision here. And when you're done, you hit save. And uh, we are now to enter this building. Let me just take out the door. 
There we go. Hit play. And I can now go through. Oh, okay, they've made an elevator door. I can go through into the building quite freely. Yeah. But we've got a much simpler collision profile. And you can see it's a lot simpler if I go to the lit mode and change it to player collision. You can see it's a lot, lot simpler. Okay. So there you go. That is what we do when we look at collisions. As I mentioned in the video, it all depends heavily on how you're going to use the meshes, what kind of game you're making, and various things like that. So you do have to weigh up your choices as you are developing. Now, in this next episode, we're going to take a look at the size map again. This is the tool we looked at previously. We we're looking at the casting. We're going to take a look at a closer look at that and look at also the reference viewer to see how we can use that to help us optimize and make sure that we have not got any uh, stray references lying about in our code. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all those videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.